Gorgeous morning. We're enjoying out here. It's overcast. It's nice and cool. Out here with Kona Marie, just enjoying herself and having coffee. But you know, uh, we talked about following up on our teaching that we did a week or so ago mm -hmm. about the power of praying in agreement. Right. And uh, I think uh, it, it is so needed for people to understand that when the nature of Christ is within a relationship, whether it be husband and wife or friendship or whatever it may be, that you know the, the miracles that can happen and the moves of God's Holy Spirit that, that actually take place. But the subject that I want to, us to discuss about is uh, what's in our, our marriage, faith or fear. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, there's been fear in different seasons of our marriage. Mm -hmm. I think every marriage goes through that. And the circumstances may have been different, whether it was business related, church related, um, personal. personal, yes, or with our children, whatever it may be. But different situations, but the root cause uh, of the issue was fear until we grew in the Lord and learned to address that fear with faith in our God. Um, we learned to pray and to bring those those things by communicating with each other. Exactly. And, and many times, I, I think fear created this wedge between us early on in our in our marriage, would led to you know further problems. And I think that's that's still true in, in many relationships, whether it be in a marriage or a business relationship or just friendships or whatever the relationship might, might, might be. But by the grace of God, you and I were able to overcome. Yes, we were. And I believe that's that same grace that, that people can learn to overcome because even early on as young Christians, we learned that, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And I think when we first learned those scriptures, that scripture, we really didn't know how to apply it and make it re relevant to our, our lives because it's easy to quote the scripture. You know that, right? It is, very much. <laughs> but most people don't know how to apply it in a relevant way to whether it be your marriage or any kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a couple minutes ago, and I, and I want you to join in here in this conversation because I'm going to tap into your wisdom, your experience, and and uh, in, in our relationship as husband and wife because you know there is such a thing as called the faith choice and I think you know watching you and watching my sisters and watching other women in the church and watching my daughters uh, I, you know women are just simply incredible especially when it comes to relationships um, but you know I've, I've discovered as a pastor that when it comes to marriage I've, usually women actually are the ones that initiate the vast majority of marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that come and say, Pastor, we need help. And when something is wrong with their marriages, most women seem to, to seek out to fix it and are much more to getting outside help towards their marriage, more, more so than men. Having said all that, there is one major fault that most men and women deal with as it relates to marriage and like I said the problem is fear you know but the Bible says in Psalm uh, chapter 5 verse 11 let all those who rejoice who put their trust in in you let them ever shout for joy because you defend them right and then there's this thing is there's power in fear power and fear but there's the fear of power right right and I agree with what you're saying because the important thing to note here is that fear is the opposite of faith. We've all heard that. Right, but right. It and it causes you to overreact to issues and to act in a manner that actually causes your fear to come true. And that's so true because I think a lot of times what we fear the most, we speak it and we actually draw it to ourselves. Right. The following scripture from the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 speaks of the issue of women, marriage, and mm -hmm. fear. Sarah devoted herself to her husband, Abraham, and even called him master. And you have become your, her daughter when you do what is right without fear and intimidation. And you know, I think she called him master because she wasn't so much being controlled by him, but because she loved him and knew that he was gonna do whatever it takes right. to take care of her. So she had no fear of him. Right. And also the culture of that time, it was, master was a, a term of it, respect. Mm -hmm. And so that was their uh, way of talking. But in verse 6, 
Peter tells the women that they are called to be like Sarah, Abraham's wife, the father of faith. But they'll, they'd have to overcome terror to be able to follow this example. Because women are very relational, as yep. we all know, and yep. very caring, yep. as we all know. Yeah, even Kona here, female, you're very relational, aren't you? <laughs> and the devil tries to use our strength as an open door. Yes, and this is where you always find two choices. Mm -hmm. uh, either faith, you're, you're either going to respond with faith or react with fear. Yes, and fear will motivate you according to your emotions and try to force different right. results. Fear always magnifies, you know, in, in my experience, fear always magnifies a husband's misbehavior. And then you know what it does? It prophesies to his wife gloom and doom for the future. So it really magnifies the fear in the, in the marriage. Exactly. And ultimately it drives her to do the wrong thing mm -hmm. and to justify what she feels and why she's doing what she's doing. Yeah, because she's trying to save the day. Exactly. And like I said earlier, women are usually the ones that step forward and say, hey, we need help. Right. But faith is just the opposite. Yes, and faith tells you to believe in God. Yep. We, all have heard, we have all heard that. So, do, And to do the right thing and to trust Him for the results. Right. Instead of acting on our emotions, yes. and we have to choose to pray and place our confidence in the Lord. According to Peter, this is the right choice for wives to get to the real results that we're so, looking for. So then the response, according to what you're saying, is should be to pray, like we taught in the last segment. Yes. And then to talk it out. Yeah, exactly. So we have to ask ourselves, in what area of our marriage do we need certain as wives. results? As, as wives. Do we want the results in, and working in faith instead of our emotions? And, and, and sometimes you react in fear instead of faith yes. because we as husbands tend to magnify that, that fear. So, it, so I would ask the husbands in what the same question that she asked the wives, what area of your marriage do you convey fear instead of faith? You know, we go through financial challenges, health issues. Um, we fear what might happen to our children, mistakes that that we've made, will they make those same mistakes? Uh, we live in such a evil world right now. I mean, we fear sending them to school. Yes, exactly, you know, it's, it's, it's very challenging. So, so the answer is to talk with your spouse, husbands talk with your wife about ways that you can come alongside of her and actually help her replace her fear with faith in God. But it starts with us as spiritual heads of the household you know, to tap in our faith to the one that gives us a promise, God himself. Because the Bible says, you know, that the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. And if that's happening to us as husbands, guess what? We're going to convey that peace to, to you as well. Exactly. You know, God is very serious on how we should treat our wives. And, and he's not just talking about the way we speak to them, but the impressions that we give. Because, you know, there's a scripture in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. In this same, uh, in, that, in that verse, it says, Husbands, you in turn must treat your wives with tenderness, viewing them as feminine partners who deserve to be honored, for they are co-heirs with you of the divine grace of life, so that nothing will hinder your, your prayers. So one of the biggest needs that women have is security. Security. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we want to know that your, our husbands are tuned in and will sacrifice to meet our needs. Yeah, because a lot of times we put work in front of our wives. I know I've been guilty of putting the church sometimes in front of our relationship, and God has corrected me over that. But nothing is more important than the knowledge that He will make our family your priority. Yeah, that's true. That's true. See, See, I, I think when men communicate with women, their words need to convey security. And this is true regardless of what the situation is or the context, context of the conversation. Yeah. The and whole thing is that we are able to communicate what we feel, what you feel, and that's what brings the marriage stronger. So you want to be able to bring your fears to me, mm -hmm. and if I am responding in faith with God through my prayers, 
then I can convey security to you. Right. See, in my relationship with you, I think the underlying or distinct theme that you've been looking for all our marriage is, is the fact that I care. Yes. And exactly. that's that's the reality in a, any marriage. As a matter of fact, it's the reality in any relationship, whether it's a an employee with an employer, a father and son relationship, a friendship, pastor and, and flock. You know that you want to know that I care about how you feel and that I'm tuned into your needs. And and I think it's important to her that I'm paying to attention to what's happening in our family, that I'm not checked out, that I don't just come home and, mm -hmm. and uh, don't bother me, it's been a hard day, you know, and so forth. You know, I, and she needs to know that I'm willing to say no to anything that gets in the way, that I'm listening for that attitude, and she's listening for that attitude in my words and in my tone. But, but if she hears something that conveys the opposite of caring, she goes on high alert. She might hear this, I'm disconnected from our family. So that magnifies a fear. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what I'm trying to say. If I create a feeling of insecurity, if I create this atmosphere of fear, it jams my intent. It doesn't matter what I'm trying to say. If I give Irene the idea that I'm disconnected from her, because in reality, I have not responded to the issue with faith, but I've allowed that fear to consume my heart and my mind, my words are not gonna be successful. Yes, that's true. But, you know, let's be honest. Men have a different focus. That's true. <laughs> and women want security, but one of the biggest needs for a man is to respect and honor him. When, when, when women communicate to men, yeah. their words need to convey respect yeah. and admiration. Yeah. And I believe in you and I love you very much. You're the best and I respect you very much. That's important for a man to hear. Mm -hmm. True, in our marriage, Irene can talk to me about the kids, about work, about spirituality things, or about hurts and fears. You know, the topic really doesn't matter as long as her attitude is acknowledging that need in me. You know, because disrespect makes it hard for men to listen. Insecurity, on the other hand, makes it hard for women to listen. So we have this circle that's going on Indian circle, you know? And uh, so successful communication within the marriage means understanding that your spouse isn't like you. And I think, men, we need to understand that the woman is not gonna respond the way we do. Exactly. We don't need what you need, and we don't hear like you hear. Yeah, so, we're different. exactly. So when a husband speaks to his wife, he needs to talk security, he needs to talk love, with an understanding heart, and then his communication will find success. And so when a wife speaks to her husband, she needs to speak the language of respect. Yep. And when you speak towards these needs, God uses your communication to strengthen your marriage. Right, right. It improves your intimacy, and it draws you closer than more than before. And this breaks the power of fear off mm -hmm. of our minds. Exactly. Your mind, my mind. Faith in each heart finds then expression through through the words that we speak to each other. Instead of, instead of you know, reacting out of fear, mm -hmm. we're, we're speaking positive. We're speaking words of faith. But then there are other issues that cause challenges in our marriage. But we believe these were there to preserve, we preserve faith in. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope is present in the in our minds as well. Right. And this type of atmosphere creates understanding. It creates healthy hearts, healthy minds, and peace in our marriage. Yes. You know, because fear and disrespect are two weapons that Satan uses to destroy marriages. Or a actually any covenant relationship. A uh, covenant relationship between employee, employers, pastors and flock, um, parents and children, and especially marriages. It creates mistrust in that relationship. But when Jesus Christ is in the equation, hard to render to each other and love for each other will prevail. You know, the scripture tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 or 11, whoever wants to embrace true life and find beauty in each day must stop speaking evil, hurtful words, and never deceive in what they say. Always turn from what is wrong and cultivate what is good. Eagerly pursue peace in every relationship, making it your prize. And after this, it's the walking it out. Yep. 
because that's when you begin planning special weekends away from home. No children, <laughs> no laptops, no cell phones. No, I'm guilty of that. So we make it a place that it could be just a short drive away, just go watch a movie, do something that's just you time and my time. And that creates a healthy atmosphere for people to be able to communicate, for wives to be able to share their, their fears with the husband, mm -hmm. and the husband to be able to share the, his fears with the wife. And then they can both respond in faith, in God, by calling on the name of Jesus. Exactly. <clears throat> Many times people don't, they think they have to set this whole amount of time aside, and sometimes it's just a small time. Yeah. It's just that small intimate time that you need together. Yeah. And that's what will cultivate that uh, confidence to be able to speak to each other right. and not fear consequences of speaking what you have in your heart. Right, right. So we wanted to bring this short little snippet to you and uh, I hope it helps in you and your relationship. It's the kind of thing that God has put on, on our hearts because I think, you know, living in the world that we live in, we need to understand that greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. And regardless of what the chatter, the world's chatter may be, you know what? Um, the banner over us is love. That's what the Bible says. And his name is Jesus Christ. We dwell in the shelter of the Most, Most High. We abide under the shadow of his wings. So, you know, perfect love cast out all fear. And when you understand how much God loves you, you know that that fear will be cast out when you focus on that love. Exactly. So let's close this with prayer. Yes. Father, I thank you that you are sovereign over all the circumstances that I'm walking through. Thank you that as I place my faith in you, nothing can ever uh, thwart your plans. You are a faithful God. Your plans are always good, even though I can't always see it. I take comfort in knowing you will not leave me nor forsake me. I find my security in you and you alone because you are trustworthy. I commit this moment to you to trust you, yes. to love you with all my heart. I commit my marriage, my husband to you with my whole heart. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Kona, come here. Kona, of course, is part of our family and we love her so much and you know one of the things that she does she responds to love and uh, respond to God's love because his love is protecting you today God bless you we love you we'll see you again